Today is Wednesday, January 4th, and there's three new anime shows we need to talk about today in winter anime season 2023. Let's get into that, guys. When you're up and down and you're over and out, come listen to your friend, Stephen Brown. This is the show with Stephen. Welcome to Breaking It Down with Brown, Weeb World, the subsection of my talk show where I talk specifically about anime. I'm your host, Stevie B, a.k.a. Daddy Cool. First up is The Magical Revolution of the Reincarnated Princess and the Genius Young Lady. Magic Revolution is a shoujo eye or girls love uh, Yuri uh, rom-com type of deal um, with a little bit of drama uh, thrown into it. Our main character is going to be Princess Anisphia, who is not able to do magic. And because of this fact, her family is not happy with her. Her family sees her as a disappointment because she cannot perform magic without the use of a magic uh, gem called Magicite, which she then um, breaks down into a medicine which she takes, which she describes as, as a little bit addictive, almost like a drug, but it gives her the power to perform magic. Um, and mainly she is obsessed with flying, and she wants to always be flying on brooms. She's obsessed with brooms and the idea of being in the air. We're introduced to Anisphia um, looking like a damsel in distress when a knight is offering to save her from these dire wolves she's killing for Magicite, but she is then um, saves herself um, as she absolutely brutalizes these dire wolves. She chops them up, man, and she is covered in their guts and gore and their blood, and she's like excited to get the gem from it, and she's rubbing the gem on her face, and she's like, ooh. Now, the majority of this episode is spent with her counterpart, Euphelia, who is uh, Duke Magenta's daughter, Euphelia Magenta. She is engaged to be wed to her fiancé, Prince Algard, who is uh, the older brother of um, the main character, Anisphia. The climax of this episode comes when Prince Algard uh, brings another woman to a ball. He's meant to be taking his fiance, the other main character, Euphelia. Uh, what happens here is he, he comes in and he breaks off his engagement in front of everyone um, and then, you know, uh, claims that Euphelia is disgraceful and, uh, and then uh, uh, accuses her of committing some sorts of crimes against uh, the side character, Lainey, this other woman he's brought with her, um, which kind of came out of nowhere, but um, it was a good setup for... Um, what happens next is uh, the other main character, um, Asphiria, his sister, breaking through the window um, on her broom is very comical. And, she's, and she sees what's going on and stuff. And she laughs about the whole situation while everyone's looking in terror. And she grabs um, Euphelia by the hand and says, let me take you away. And they fly off together. And that's the end of the episode, setting up, um, setting up the rest of the season, uh, whatever it may be wind up becoming if it's more going to be more drama or comedy who knows what if there's going to be some action or something and it says um the the narrator comes over the overhead and says um you know we're uh this is they, these girls are starting a magic revolution they had no idea yet it was just beginning <laughs> Now, I will straight up say um, that this was uh, my most enjoyable show of these three shows today, and I look most forward to seeing what this one brings about. Um, it does um, seem... It's not the generic fantasy thing going on, which I'm a sucker for fantasy, though, medieval fantasy, so there's something fun about that coming. Um, and I'm excited to see if it's going to be more comical or if they're going to really play into this drama or what's going to happen. And it's a shoujo eye, too, and honestly, usually... Um, even though it's not like etchy or anything, but usually Yuri shows go crazy. Usually they're written really well for whatever reason. Our second show, The Ice Guy and His Cool Female Colleague. Fuyutsuki is a very um, stoic, um, unfeeling young woman, uh, which other people say that she she uh, seems as if she has no emotion. Um, she explains herself that she doesn't feel as strongly as other people. Is starting her first day at work um, at some kind of office job. They don't really explain exactly what it is or what she does, but on her way to work, she stops at a riverside and sees... 
Himuro, or the ice guy in this situation. He is frozen from his knees down, and then he begins to explain that he is a descendant of a yokai uh, snow woman. And then when he feels emotions or gets nervous, it starts to snow around him or get cold, or sometimes he'll get frozen in place. So Fuyutsuki helps him out by uh, pouring some hot tea on him to uh, make him melt, and then they both leave to go to work and wind up seeing, you know, once they get to work, that they work together. Now, the, um, at the office job, we're revealed to see, to meet three more characters. There's a normal guy, there's a fox spirit girl who's the descendant of a fox spirit who's got ears and a tail. And there's also um, their boss who looks like Buddha. And the show wastes no time jumping right into um, just the day-to-day -day aspect of them working together and doing random things. And throughout this first episode, Fuyutsuki um, is often trying to do things for Himuro, the ice guy, to um, try and help him with his, his, um, uh, his uh, curse, his inability to stop from freezing things around him. And this leads to him immediately falling in, love with him in the falling in love with her in the first episode. He says, you know, it shows him saying to himself, oh, I'm in love with her. I love that she's doing these things for me. And um, this show seems very um, chill. It's very low-key vibes. It's very slow-going feeling. It's nothing. It's got like that subdued vibe to it. Um, it's pretty comfy. Um, I'm going to keep watching it. I'm not super excited to see where it goes because I'm pretty sure I already know how it's going to go. I feel like it's already kind of showed its, um, its hand here and it's just going to be like a weekly little rom-com deal. And our last show for the day, which was my least favorite, um, was Tomo-chan as a girl. It does have the most um, opportunity to grow on me, though, I will say. So right off the bat, right out the gate, the first scene is Tomo confessing her love to her childhood friend, uh, Junichiro, um, who then, you know, she says, I love you, and, he, and she says, oh, I love you, or he says, I love you too, man, right back to her, um, in a joking way, in a non-serious way. I love you, June, okay? So... It's cool if you want to respond. Can't believe it took you so long to tell me that. <gasps> but then... <laughs> Love you too, my friend. Come on. Thumb. Thumb. Yeah. Dude doesn't get it. Not a word I said, or that I'm even a girl. And this show, too, just like the last one, spends no time at all jumping right into um, uh, uh, little vignettes, little jokes here and there, and little mo moments of their days together, um, just showing this character setting up the fact that um, she is a tomboy who likes karate, um, who, who is mistaken as a man a lot by people, and her childhood best friend doesn't see her as a girl. He knows she's a girl, but he doesn't see her as a potential love interest or a real um, a female, like doesn't take her seriously, and doesn't take it seriously when she says that she's in love with him, thinking it's just like a bro duel. I'm like, oh, I love you, bro. Although I will say this character right out the bat is the first character of this season that makes me think wife and material girl, best girl of the season. I mean, look, she got the red mullet like me. She got the fangs. She's wearing the little bike shorts. She's Tom girl. She knows karate. She's tomboy. I mean, she's, she's kicking ass. She's super cool. And I think uh, there's a lot of potential there for, um, for, for people to uh, fall in love with this character. Although I will say that um, I watched this one with my girlfriend and uh, while we were cleaning and stuff, so I didn't pay too much attention to it because um, I could tell right off the bat, I was like, I don't need to pay too much attention to this one. Um, and I watched the dub. I watched the English dub um, because it's simulcast to come out the same time as the subs. And eh, yeah, not a very good dub. It's just kind of like I can tell. I'm sure that the sub's a lot better. I'm thinking about maybe checking out the sub just to see that difference, but I could feel um, the ick on this one. All right, up next, now that we officially have other shows than just one show for the season, what we're going to be doing with every video, with every new episode of a show, we're going to be looking at my power ranking list. Let's go ahead and cut to that. You can see here, um, these are the four shows that have come out so far in just the two days, and this is where they stand. I'm looking at Magic Revolution as my number one show so far. I'm mostly excited to see where that goes. I like the characters a lot so far. I like the art. I like all that. Um, second up is Ningen Fushin, which um, is sort of like a guilty pleasure for me right now. Looking at it, it is very generic. I'm not going to lie. We talked about this in our last episode if you watched it, um, the first episode of we world um the other day um but i still just can tell i'm going to enjoy this one a bit more than the other shows out right now number three is going to be ice guy ice guy is cute it's got a nice air to it um still in my opinion a little generic um it could it, it seems kind of like a 
very fine six to me. So we'll see how it progresses, if it gets better, if it gets worse. And number four is Tomo-chan, which I don't have any intentions of dropping Tomo-chan. Um, so nothing looks like a drop just yet, but um, Tomo-chan, still something about it. It's missing something. It could have just been the dub, I'm not going to lie. It could have just been that I watched the English dub and it was not great. So that was Wii World Day 2, and I am kind of nervous uh, because there's, I'm a little stressed out because there's so much that's going to be happening. This is just three uh, shows today, um, and tomorrow is five shows, and I know it's just going to keep getting more and more. So hopefully there's some suckers in there that we can cut, some shit that we don't have to watch. Like, I know tomorrow there's a show we're going to watch called, like, Spy Classroom or something. That looks awful, um, so I can't wait to rag on that probably. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked what you heard, consider liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. If you didn't like what you heard, I appreciate you sticking around and listening to a different opinion. And if you hated what you heard, you can get bent. The show is over, but you're still here hanging around. Why don't you hit subscribe?